Well, let's crack! For this project, I'm going to be making a patriotic sign to go beside my fireplace. I'm using some leftover wood and some letters that I ran off from my computer, printed out, and cut them out. And then I have a star from my stash. I need a bow that I made previously, some scrapbook paper, and some apple barrel paint in red, white, and blue gloss, and then some various tools from my stash that I pulled. The board that I'm using was just a leftover piece that was 5 inches by 37 and a half inches long. I measured 6 inches down from the top, drew a line, and I'm going to paint that top part with our royal blue apple barrel paint in an acrylic finish, high gloss. It actually took two coats to make it look really good. I also painted the outer edge and the top. And now I want to split the bottom into three equal parts. I drew a line down each side at approximately one and five eighths inches in from the edge. I'm being very careful to line that up exactly because if the line is off, it won't look very well because I want some nice crisp red lines. Are you as anal about your lines as I am? If it doesn't look right, it will drive me crazy. And now that I have the lines in, I've taped off the area that's the middle. I decided I would use that white apple barrel paint and give it a good glossy finish. And now I'm taping that area off once it's dry. And I'm going to paint the two outer stripes in a glossy red apple barrel paint. I painted the edges as well because it just gave it a nice finished look. I ended up using two coats of the red acrylic paint. And now I'm taking my letters. I'm taping them down to my foam board with some tape. I'm going to draw around them and then use my X-Acto knife to come back and cut them out. I didn't have any wooden letters and I didn't really want to spend the money anyhow. This gives it a nice 3D effect. It almost comes across as looking like wood. It takes a little time and a little effort, but they actually turned out pretty well. I decided to make my letters all on from one sheet of scrapbook paper. I had thought I would use multicolors but the effect actually came off better just using the same color for all of the letters. I traced it onto the back of the paper, I cut them out, and now I'm using Mod Podge to attach each piece of scrapbook paper to the actual letter. And then a coat of Mod Podge on the outside as well to seal it nicely. The Mod Podge gives it a nice glossy effect, much like my paint. And I also painted the outside of my letters in the royal blue acrylic. The white didn't look as well on the board and I liked the way it gave it some depth. And now to place them on the board, I'm measuring two and a half inches down from the top and two and a half inches up from the bottom. I find my center and then I place down all of my letters equally spaced as possible. Coming back with some hot glue, I'm going to start at the bottom with gluing the E on, come back to the middle with the C, to the top for the W, and then I'll just place the remaining letters in between. The last thing I need to do is place the star at the top. I'll just attach it with some hot glue, not exactly centering it because I want to give plenty of room for my bow to show. I attach the bow by just using a nail at the top of the board. 
and there she stands by my fireplace. I just love how this project turned out and I probably only have about two dollars in the entire thing. In this video we are spotlighting our top patriotic 4th of July projects that were featured over the past month. We hope you will love having them all together. If you are new here, we would love it if you will hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. I keep seeing these little interchangeable seasonal ladders all over Etsy and I just think they're adorable. I would love to have one for my home but I'm not going to pay $20 for the ladder and then up to $60 for the little kit for each season. So I decided that I'd make me one and of course I want to take you guys along with me. I went to Home Depot and I got a 1x3 and a 1x2. Both of my boards are 8 foot long. I'm going to use the 1x3 for the side pieces and I'm going to use the 1x2 for the cross pieces. I want mine to set up against a wall. I'm going to keep it inside probably. I may set it out on the porch sometimes but for the most part it's going to stay in, in the house. So for my 1x3 I'm going to cut it kind of in half. On the ones that I've been seeing, one side of it is about an inch or two shorter than the other side. So that's what I'm going to do with mine. I'm going to make it so that it's just an inch or two shorter on one side than it is on the other. First I'm just going to measure my board and there's my halfway point. So I'm going to go an inch over from my halfway point and that's going to give me about a two inch difference. As I've mentioned before, if you don't have a saw or you're not comfortable using a saw, you can get Home Depot or Lowe's, either one, to make your cuts for you. Just take the measurements that you need and one of the people who work over in the wood section is always happy to do that for you. I have my little chop saw. I actually got it at the Home Depot last year. I think I paid like $100 for it. It wasn't that expensive and it has been a lifesaver. I love this thing. My husband has to help me with the circular saw because it's heavy and it's kind of difficult for me to maneuver but I can use this one easily. You just position your board where you want it. It actually has a laser that will show you. It, it puts a red mark across and it shows you where your cut's going to be and then you just make your cuts. So I'm going to cut my board just a little over half. I'm going to have one side 49 inches and the other side 47 inches. For my one by twos I'm going to cut them at 18 inches. On now, the shorter of my side pieces I'm going to cut the bottom at a slight angle because that's how all of these are. They look really whimsical and one side is kind of leaning into the other one. They're not straight. You don't want them to be straight unless you're OCD. You may want them to be straight. I don't want mine to be straight. I want it to be whimsical like the ones that I keep seeing. And then you also cut your one by twos at an angle as well. So I'm going to make those cuts. I have my pieces cut. I cut my 1x3 at 49 inches and 47 inches and then I cut off the bottom of the shorter one at an angle. I used a 15 degree angle. That may be too much for you. It does lean in quite a bit but that's fine. Um, I wanted it to look whimsical and it's going to look whimsical. Now, I also cut my 1x2. I cut three 18 inch pieces and I also angled their ends. I will put all these measurements down in the description box in case you want to make one of your own so you would know what to take with you if you needed to go to Home Depot and get them to cut it for you. I'm just going to use my little hand sander and I'm going to sand off my ends and just make them smooth. Sometimes the saw leaves it a little jagged so I'm just going to smooth those out. Our wood is now sanded and I'm going to stain mine. I'm going to be using the Minwax in the Jacobing. Um, I like dark wood. We have a lot of dark wood in our house so that's what I'm going to be using on mine. I have seen these painted white or black. 
they're almost always a solid color and I guess that's because you're going to be changing them out with the seasons so you don't want to stick yourself with something that wouldn't go with all seasons um, but since I have the dark wood I'm just going to go with the dark wood if I decide later that I would rather have some white on it I will add that you can always go back in and distress it with some white chalk paint so now we're just going to finish staining our wood okay so I have my wood stained now I'm just going to put it in the shed and let it dry overnight it's been really rainy here today and it's already about 8 p.m. so I'm I know this is not going to dry enough for us to put it together today we will come back in the morning and get this thing together so now the stain is dry on our wood and we're going to put our ladder together I know I'm going to be moving mine around a lot. Sometimes I'll have it indoors. I may set it outdoors sometimes. So since I am going to be moving it a lot, I'm going to use my construction adhesive by Gorilla and I'm going to put some wood screws in it just to give it that extra hold. Now if you're not going to be moving it around a lot, if you know you're going to put it in one place and pretty much leave it, you may not have to put the screws in there. I just want to know that mine is secure. The first thing I'm going to do is line up my wood so that I know where I want to put my cross slats. Now because I cut one at an angle, I'm going to use one of my cross slats so that I can figure out exactly how it goes even because I don't want it to be uneven. And I think that's going to be about right there. I'm going to be putting my slats on at odd angles because I want it to look whimsical. I want it to look like a child may have made it. I don't want it to be all straight and perfect. I think this is going to be right. So now I'm going to take and dr I'm going to drill pilot holes into my top slats so that my screws will go in easily. I'm going to use my husband's drill for that. I just put a little drill bit on there and I'm just going to drill two holes in each one. Before I put my screws in though, I am going to put some glue under each one just to give it a little extra hold. And there's our little ladder. Now the screws do show on mine and that doesn't bother me. I think it adds to the whimsy but if it does bother you you could always screw it in from the back so that you wouldn't see it. You could screw through the backboard or you can take some wood putty and fill it in and, and stain over it or paint over it but like I said it doesn't bother me in the least. I think it kind of adds to the whimsy. So there's our ladder. Now let's go in and make our seasonal kit to go with this one. All of the whimsical ladders that you see on Etsy have interchangeable seasonal decorations. So we're going to make some for the 4th of July and then I intend to change them out every season. So maybe we'll come together and make other kits that we can use to change out our decorations on it for other seasons as well. But for this one, I have a few things in mind. I want to use this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've already taken one piece off, but that's actually not the piece that I want to use. I think I want to use the one that says Home of the Brave. I really like that one. So we're going to take this sign off of that and I'll add some twine to it so that I can hang it from my ladder. So that's going to be one piece. I also have these glitter stars that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on clearance. So I think I'm going to use them on there as well. Now another thing that I have in mind for this is I want to make a firecracker to go across the board. So I went online and I found an outline for a firecracker and I'm just going to cut it out and then I'm going to trace it onto my foam board piece that I've got here and I'm going to cut it out with my X-Acto knife. So let's trace and cut that. Okay, so now I have our firework cut out. I do want to cut the top out of the stars and I'm going to cut the body out of the stripes. So I'm going to take my template that I had and I'm just going to cut around it so that I can have what I need to be able to cut out the pieces out of our scrapbook paper. Now I'm just going to trace this on and then cut this out. Okay, I cut out my scrapbook paper for my firecracker. 
I did get my scrapbook paper at Hobby Lobby. It's over there where the regular scrapbook paper is. It's always 25 cent per sheet. It's a great value and I love mixing this distressed looking red stripe with the stars that come on the blue background. I just think it has a really cool look to it. Now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and apply a generous layer to my foam board and apply my paper. Okay, so we have our paper applied and I'm liking how it's looking, but it's just a little flat. You guys know I'm all about some sparkle. So when I add my top layer of my Mod Podge, I think I'm going to sprinkle on some of my iridescent glitter that I have just to give it a little bit of shine. Okay, our rocket is dry and I'm really loving the little sparklies on it. I went around and I trimmed up my edges. Now for the part that comes out the back, I guess like the flame part, I have this that I got at Hobby Lobby. It has three little pom-poms, red, white, and blue pom-poms on it. This I think I'm going to cut it apart and try to insert it into our rocket. I'm going to stick it right in here into our foam board and just have it coming out the back. I think I will put some glue on it though because I want to make sure that it stays. I don't want it to fall off. Okay, and there it is. I, I like that. I think that turned out really cute. Now, the other thing I need to do this is make a hanger. I want to be able to hang it on our ladder. So I'm gonna just take a piece of twine. I'm just using my regular jute twine that I get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut a piece and attach it with glue. Right, so that's attached. We're going to lay it to the side and let the glue dry. When you flood it like that, it does take a little bit of time. When you've got that much glue, it has to set up. Now for our little home of the brave sign, I need to also put a hanger on it. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add some twine to the back of it. For our glitter stars, I want to attach them to the top of the ladder. I'm going to do that with Velcro. That way I can just change them out with the seasons and I don't have to worry about that. But for the silver and the red one, I actually want to glue them on top of each other so that when they're on our ladder, they'll look like that. And then I will just put Velcro on the back of it and put it on the top of our ladder. I so got that, this at the Dollar Tree. I think it's absolutely adorable. It says USA and it's got a little Uncle Sam's hat on it. But I don't want it to hang straight down. That would be too long for our ladder. So what I'm going to do is take it apart and then I'm going to cut this little hanger off because I don't want this hanger on ours. I'm going to use twine to hang it. So now we just have our four pieces and I actually do want to use all four pieces. I think that this is an adorable little sign. What I'm thinking is to turn it maybe like this and have USA and then put our Uncle Sam hat like this and glue it down and then we'll just use twine to hang it. And there you go. We just turned it around and I think it's adorable. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cut a piece of twine to make a hanger. And I'm going to do it the same way I did the others. I'm just going to flood it with hot glue and make it so that it will hang. I also got this garland from the Dollar Tree that I want to use. I'm going to try to wrap it up the ladder just to give it some more dimension and a little more decorations. So decorative whimsical ladder all put together. I love this piece. I think it turned out absolutely adorable. It looks just as good as the ones on Etsy for a fraction of the price. I love the decorations that we ended up using on this for the 4th of July. I think that it turned out beautiful. Everything came from the Dollar Tree except for the firecracker and we made that. We have about $4.50 in the decorations and about $4 in the ladder. So for less than $10, you could have a whimsical ladder that you can change out for each season. 
I love this piece and I know that it's going to be a part of my home all year round. So for today's Made It Monday, what I'm going to be making is a table runner to go on the beverage table for a 4th of July party. As you know, Trish and I are doing a 4th of July party that we're calling Southern Living on a Budget. So this piece is just some heavy duty pellon. It's interfacing that you can sew to line clothing. It's very heavy duty, by the way, but this is just a leftover remnant. You can use whatever you have, but this will become the base of the table runner. It's a little wide right now, but I'm going to trim it up. It's approximately 40 inches long. It may or may not stay that long. This is going on a four foot table, so a table that's around two by four. What I'm going to sew to the top of my pillon is this fabric. This is actually from a paint tarp that came from Walmart quite some time ago. I just cut off a piece and I'm going to sew it to my pillon and that's going to become my table runner. I have some paints that I'm going to use. Apple barrel left over in my collection from quite some time. You saw me use these probably in an earlier project last week. So I'm going to cut these to the right size and then we'll come up with a pattern to paint for our party. So I squared up my pillow and it ended up being 14 inches by 38 inches. Because my table is 24 inches by 48 inches, I thought that was pretty good. It'll be 10 inches less width and 10 inches less in length. So I've got that ready to go. The next thing I'm going to do is iron the fabric that I'm going to be painting on. If you sew it all, you know an iron is a seamstress best friend. So I wanted you to see what I've done so far before I sew it. What I did was take my iron and press under my seam allowance and I have it pinned here. I just used the iron to turn it under so that on the back you will only see the um, lining. So that's what I'm going to do now. I have it pinned down with these clips and I'm going to go in and run me a seam all the way around. runner all sewn. Everything's nice and neat. There's the back. The stiffness will keep it laid flat. This material, because it is a drop cloth, it's inexpensive fabric, it will pull some. So you have to be very careful when you pin it and sew it. The next thing I'm going to do is put a coat of white paint to be my base, my primer if you will. And I'm just using this ordinary paint that I had left from Walmart. So I realized there's not much to see at this point, but I did want to let you know that I did a coat of the primer, which was the flat paint, and now I have put on the Apple Barrel White, and it is still in the drying phase. It may take two coats, actually. So I'm waiting for it to dry, and then the next thing we're going to do is draw some stars. I'm going to be using a template I've had this a really long time. It's going to be hard for you to see, but I'm going to put my hand behind it. It has a bigger star, the smaller star, and the medium star. And I'm going to lay those out and cut out, or rather draw out, my pattern. So my runner now has the coat of primer, of course, and two coats of the white apple barrel paint. I'm going to take my stencil Place it here on the end. I'm centering it, lining it up sort of towards the edge and centering it on each side, not really measuring it right now. And I'm going to take a pencil and outline the three stars that I like. It takes a little bit of time and you need to hold it kind of steady. but it's not a difficult project at all. The 
The Apple Barrel is a gloss, which means it takes a little bit of effort to write on it with the pencil. I have my stars drawn in. The next thing I need to do is paint them. I got out a, an assortment of my small brushes, and you just have to kind of use the one you're more, most comfortable with. I like a really crisp line, and I want it to look like a star and not be distorted, so I'm going to use the smaller one. I'm going to start with the big one. Just kind of outline it. I can always come back later and fill it in with a larger brush. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And if you make a mistake at this point, you can probably clean it off pretty easily because of the white being such a gloss finish. So that's really what I'm going to do. I'm going to trace this one red and that one, and the one in the middle, I think I'll do in that royal blue color. all painted and ready to go. I have it sitting on a four foot table in my studio. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I think it will be a cute addition to our 4th of July Southern Living on a Budget party. The first project we're going to use our board that washed up out of the lake. This is a pretty big board. It's four foot long and it's nine inches wide. I tried to get the whole thing in the camera. I can't get it all in there, so we will just work on it a piece at the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my piece of chalk, and I'm going to do a rough outline of what I want to paint on here. I'm going to go across this way. That's going to be my first line. And then I want to make some wiggly lines going down. So let me move it up. And I'm going to just kind of make them wiggle. Okay, so I let's see. Yeah, I guess you can see it. I just made some outlines of what I wanted to paint. For the top part up here, I want to paint it with this Apple Barrel Admiral Blue paint. I probably would like a more true blue paint, but this is all I've got on hand and right now I can't go out and get any, so this is going to have to do. Now you can tell that my board has a lot of warps and weaves in it and it has um, places that are 
broke out of it and I actually like that that's what I like about it that's what happens to this wood when that stays in the lake and I love how rustic it looks so we're going to take our blue paint and we're just going to paint up here actually this blue is actually coming out a really nice color I like this now I'm going to start on my wavy stripes and the first color I'm going to use is the acrylic white from Anita's. I'd really like to be able to use white chalk paint on this, but I have so little of it left that I know that it wouldn't last for this whole project. So I'm just going to go ahead and use acrylic paint and hopefully it's going to be okay. What is it that Kay says? When life gives you lemons, make something sweet. So I've got some lemons going on here and we're going to try to make something sweet out of them. Next, we're going to be putting on True Red by Anita's. I think this is probably going to be the right color red that I want. The blue actually turned out to be very close to what I wanted so I'm not sure that I would have wanted a different blue even if I would have had it and now I'm just going to go in and fill in with the red in between the white up here I did mess up and I put some white in the area where it should be red but that's okay because we'll just paint over it this is real life and this is what happens whenever we start painting sometimes I got my red and my white in there. I did end up changing to a smaller brush because my wood has all these grooves in it that you wouldn't have if you purchased a piece of wood from town. But that's what happens to it when it stays in the water so long. It wears away and it gets these grooves in it. And that's part of what I like about it. But it also makes my painting come uneven. And that's still okay. I still like the looks of it. To make the stars on my flag, I've decided I'm just going to sponge paint them on. So I printed off a star and I cut it out of paper and now I'm going to trace it onto this sponge and then cut it out of the sponge. I cut my star out of the sponge and now I'm just going to use the white paint and dip it in and kind of spounce it around so that it won't have too much on it and then I'm just going to find a place and press it down. So there's my flag. I knew whenever I wanted to make it that I wanted it to go outside by one of the doors and I like it by these back doors better than I did by the front door. My husband and I are both very patriotic from somewhere around May until the fall. We love to decorate with anything that has to do with the USA. It takes us through all those summer holidays. So he is very well pleased with this flag and I like it too. I hope I've given you an idea for something that you can do for your home. For this look for less, I'm going to be recreating these chargers I saw on Wayfair that were two chargers for $71.99. And then I saw some on Overstock.com, a set of four for $35.95. I'm going to be using some silver chargers that I got from the Dollar Tree. Also, we'll need some scrapbook paper. I purchased mine from Hobby Lobby. I got some stars and some stripes. I have some chalk paint I'm going to be using. I'll need a brush, a sanding block, and some Mod Podge. Mod Podge is going to be used as my glue to keep it all together. First thing I'm going to do is do a heavy sanding on every charger that I'm going to be making to get off the shiny coating. That will allow things to attach. And now we're giving it a coat of paint. This is white chalk paint.
I ended up making at least two coats on all of my chargers. The next thing I want to do is make a pattern for the corner part of my charger where my stars will be. I just traced it out into a semicircle, cut it out, I folded it in half, and then I laid it down on my charger to see exactly how much area I wanted to cover because I didn't want it to be exactly one fourth because that's not how the chargers looked on the website. So I'm trimming it out. Then I'm going to pin it down to my fabric because I don't want it moving around. And now we're cutting it out. So now I'm going to begin putting Mod Podge on the charger. You want to be very generous. I'm doing about half the plate at a time. And now I'll work on the bottom half. It does dry kind of quickly. So you have to move fast. And that's why I don't want to do the entire plate at one time. And then I want to smooth it down and get all those wrinkles out. Being careful that I don't leave any strings from my fabric underneath. I decided not to use scrapbook paper on this particular charger. Just thought it would be easier and give it a different look. And now I'm putting a generous coat on the outside of my charger. That will help it be more waterproof and it will also help me to cut it out. Because once the fabric stiffens, it is so much easier to cut it out with a Zacto knife. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And finally, I'll place on our field of blue stars and trim that out. And that's my first charger plate. For the second charger plate, I measured the center and I found out it was about eight and a half inches. Well, this roll of ribbon is also eight and a half inches, so I will use that as my pattern for the center part of my charger plate. So I'll just place it down on my scrapbook paper, which happens to be eight and a half inches wide. And it is blue with white stars. And now I just need to cut that out. I got out my cutter and took my 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and cut it into individual pieces. That's because my paper's 12 by 12 and my charger plate is about 13 and a half inches. So I will have to piece mine as I go to make sure that I have enough to cover all sides. Once I had enough, I started laying out a pattern on my plate. And then I decided I would use one of the white strips that was in between so that I could lay it out each time with equal spacing. Lots of Mod Podge. And then cover the whole thing with Mod Podge to seal it in. And I just left my strips where I could trim them off later. And now I'm applying Mod Podge to the center and put in that star paper that we cut earlier, then give it a good coating on the outside. And there they are. I just love this project and how it turned out. Can you believe I have less than $3 in each plate? That is so much cheaper than the website. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our videos with you on YouTube and we also like to meet people and share our crafts at craft shows. 
our first project today is going to be some fireworks we're going to make for a tablescape for a 4th of July party. We're going to use some old Pringles cans, some paint, some scrapbook paper, and some cute embellishments. Let's get started y'all! We want our fireworks to be three different sizes. So we cut two strips of paper, one that was one and a half inches, and one that was three inches wide. Tape them around the can, drew a line with a marker, and finally we cut them out with a Zacto knife. We also knew that we were going to need to weight these cans so they wouldn't tip over easily. So we got some rocks and put into the bottom of our can and glued the top back on. We flipped them over and that's now become black. For our first can, we wanted to paint it blue. So we used a base coat of chalk paint and finally we put on two coats of royal blue acrylic. For our second firework, we wanted to use some scrapbook paper. So we measured it out and then put a generous coating of Mod Podge all over the can. We applied the red and white striped paper vertically on two thirds of the can. Then we took the blue with white stars and applied it to the top third of the can. and we sealed it all in with some more Mod Podge. For the third can, we applied a wide stripe scrapbook paper horizontally. Used Mod Podge to put it on the can. And finally, of course, covering it with Mod Podge all over. On our blue can, we applied foam stars of different sizes. We gave the smaller ones a fresh coat of white paint to really make them pop. To embellish our striped can, we wanted to use 3D stars, so we used table scatter from Dollar Tree. We cut out a portion of the back to, so it would have a flat surface, and then we could easily glue it to the can. We knew that we liked this silver part of the can, so we wanted to keep it as the top part of our firework. To be able to put fuses in, we took a Zacto knife and we punched a small hole in the top. For two of the fireworks, we took balloon weights from the Dollar Tree and we cut out the center portion of them. Then we just took some hot glue and applied them. For the tallest firework, we wanted it to be just a little bit different. So we got some red, white, and blue pom-poms from Hobby Lobby and we cut one of those out and applied it in the same manner. And there's our fireworks. Oh, I just love how they turned out. I think they're going to be the perfect addition to our tablescape. And can you believe we only spent about $3 on this entire project? Kay and I are excited to be teaming up with Heidi Sambal DIY for her brand new Summer DIY Daily Series. Each day in June and July, Heidi will be spotlighting some of the newer, smaller channels by joining them in collaborations. We are honored to be chosen as her very first channel. If you haven't heard of Heidi, well go check her out. She has some of the most gorgeous DIYs you will ever find. We will have a link to her channel in the description box below. Make sure you tell her we sent you over. If you are new and coming over from Heidi's channel, welcome. 
We are so happy to have you join us. We release five videos each week. Make sure you keep an eye out this Wednesday when we release information on our second subscriber giveaway. You're not going to want to miss it. Now, let's craft, y'all. So for our second project today, we decided we needed some really cute front door decor. Kay already had this S, and since both of our last names start with S, we knew we could turn it into an adorable red, white, and blue project. We're going to be using some fabric, we're going to Mod Podge it on, and that'll make it a little more durable than if we use scrapbook paper, because in the south we have a lot of sun. We also are going to use this patriotic ribbon to make us a bow, mm -hmm. so let's get everything organized and then we'll get started. To begin our project, we removed all of the embellishments from the front and then we put on a nice coat of paint. Here we're just laying out the fabric so we can get an idea for how it's going to look and where we want one fabric to end and the other one to begin. We did know that we wanted the blue fabric on top and that we wanted to use that red and white stripe as a diagonal on the bottom. We start putting down our Mod Podge where our bottom fabric is going to be because if you put it all over, it has a tendency to dry out really fast. You do want to do just one section at a time, a small one. Here you see that we are spreading it out really good, getting all those air bubbles out, getting the wrinkles smoothed out. But the good news is fabric is much more forgiving than paper. This is true. It won't tear and if you make a mistake, you can actually lift it and put it back down again. Here we're piecing together our stripes. We want to make sure that they match perfectly. And you know we're using a few pieces together there of scrap. If you have one big piece, you don't have to do that. That's very true. But we wanted to save money and just use what we had so we didn't go and try to find another piece. Here we're cutting off the excess before it goes into the bigger part of the S. We thought it would be easier if we did it here at the thinner part and then you wouldn't have that big lump under the other part. Add a little bit of Mod Podge. And then we're going to make sure we match up these stripes as well. And if you're matching pieces of fabric, you want to make sure you get some glue under every edge so that they are perfectly sealed. That's true because while we had Mod Podge on the wood, we didn't have it on that piece of fabric that it was lapping over. Here we are applying our blue fabric. We put the blue on top of the red and white because it already had a nice edge and that we knew we would, it would look better that way. Once again, smoothing it out. Now we apply another layer of Mod Podge on top of our fabric. Don't worry about it looking cloudy because this stuff dries really clear. It does. You won't be able to tell it once it gets dry. It's one of my favorite mediums to work with. Mod Podge also will stiffen up this fabric. Once we start cutting it, you won't have to worry about it snagging or pulling. And it's also good for the elements when you're placing something outside, which we're going to do. Now we're going to do the crowning touch on our project by making a simple bow out of a one and a half inch ribbon. It's wired, so it's quite easy. I'm still impressed that you can do this with just your hands. I'm sure I would have to have a tool. <laughs> Most of the time I do use my easy bow. But this is a simple five loop ribbon. I see that you're using a chenille stem to tie it off with. I like to use chenille stems. They work really well and they're not expensive. I think I've seen you use zip ties as well. I have. Dovetailing those ends. Giving it a little fluff. And there's our bow. Now we're going to start trimming our fabric. Our Mod Podge is finally dry and it's stiff. So we just take our Zacto knife and run around those edges. And it really didn't take that long. I was surprised. Well, once we got a fresh blade, it worked a lot better. <laughs> That's true as well. <laughs> you want to make sure you don't have a dull blade, but this works a lot better than scissors. 
You are so right. It gets really close to that edge and you don't have to worry about jagged pieces. And put on the crowning touch, a little glue, and we're placing our bow towards the center where the two fabrics meet. It's our door hanger. I just love it. And we have hardly any money in this project. And there's our firecrackers and our door hanger in their proper place. For Main It Monday, I'm going to be attempting a Hobby Lobby dupe. Kay and I are planning a huge 4th of July party at my house, and I've been looking online to get some inspiration for patriotic home decor and party decorations. When I looked on the Hobby Lobby site, I found this beautiful faux window shutter flag. I really love this piece and while it's only $20, when you're buying so much for a party, you kind of want to cut corners any way you can. So I started thinking about items that I had at home and I'm pretty sure I can replicate this. Does it work out? Stick around and let's find out. To make my version of the Hobby Lobby shutter sign, I took a piece of wood that I got from Home Depot and I cut it down into five pieces. Now you can get this at any Home Depot and they will make these cuts for you if you take the measurements to them. I have a little chop saw so it was easy for me to do plus I already had this wood on hand. I do other wood projects and this was left over from last year so I decided to go ahead and use it. But just go into Home Depot and if you can't find it just ask someone for a piece of one by two by eight wood and they will take you over to where it's at and then you can tell them how you want it cut. I cut mine into two 24 inch pieces so these two are 24 inches and then I cut three 9 inch pieces. I had plenty of wood for that out of that one piece and I have a quite a big piece left over and I think this cost me like a dollar and eighty cent for this eight foot piece of wood. So that's a real bargain. If you end up going over to your Home Depot and getting this, this sign is going to end up costing you less than $5. For the slats on the shutter, I'm going to be using painter sticks. I also got these at the Home Depot and again I've had these for a while. I picked up several packs at the end of last year for some projects I was doing and I never used them. They come 10 to a pack and I'm actually using 11. If you don't want to buy two packs of them, they're 97 cent a pack for 10 painter sticks, then you could only use nine and just make this board two inches um, shorter. So instead of 24 inches, it would be 22 inches. That's completely up to you. I wanted mine to be 24 inches, so I opened up two packs. I cut these at nine inches as well, which makes them be cut right below that little divot that they have for you to hold when you're stirring paint. So this is all the wood that we're going to need for our project. I'm going to paint all five pieces of this with a white acrylic. I'm just going to be using Anita's. I'll probably have to put at least two coats, maybe three coats. I'm not using chalk paint because the one in Hobby Lobby kind of had a shiny sheen to it, so I thought the acrylic might work better for that. For the paint sticks, I'm going to be painting six of them red and five of them white. For the white, I will use the same Anita's acrylic paint that I'm using for these sticks. And then for this one, this is one that I had found at Walmart. It was the only one they had. It's by Folk Art and it's called Red Flash. They did not have any of the cheap paints, acrylic paints, so I had to get what I could and this is what I got. So hopefully it's gonna be the right color. So let's paint our wood and We'll be right back after it dries.
our boards are painted and dried. For these frame boards, I did not paint the back because we're going to be putting a back on it and you're not going to be able to see that. So I just left it blank. And I did the same thing with these support boards. Now for my slats, the paint sticks, I actually did paint both sides and the sides of them. For the red, I had to put three coats on them to get the color that I wanted. But now they're all ready to go. We're going to set our boards aside for a moment. I took a piece of foam board and I cut it to the dimensions that I wanted my sign to be. It's 24 inches this way and 12 inches across. Then I took and I painted a little more than half of the top of it with my royal blue acrylic paint. After that had dried, I put a coat of Mod Podge on top of that so that it would have that glossy look that I was wanting for the top of my shutter. Now we're going to assemble our frame on top of this. So I will take it and lay it down. We're going to first put our two long pieces on each side and I'm going to glue those down with a mixture of my hot glue and my Gorilla Glue. My Gorilla Glue will be for the stronghold and my hot glue is going to be for the fast connect. Now those are secure. We're going to put our crossbars in between and we're going to glue them down as well. Now we have our frame put together. We're going to put our slats in for our shutter. I'm going to start with red and I'm going to alternate them all the way down. Red, white, red, white. When I put them in, I will put a drop of glue on each end and I'm going to put them in at an angle so that they will look like slats going all the way down. So let's grab our glue gun and get started with that. Now we have our slats put in. You can see that I did them at a slight angle so that they look like a shutter going all the way down. Now in the top part up here where the blue is, they had one big 3D star in the middle and then 12 smaller stars circling it. To get my 3D star, I googled 3D star pattern and it pulled this up that has these little lines and those are your fold lines. For all of the lines on the points, you're going to fold up. You fold it this way. For all of the lines that are in between the points, you fold it down that way. So you're going to go up, down, I'll show you this one, up, down, and then up again and down. And you want to make sure that you watch your center because it's going to come together and it's going to be your point in the middle and that's going to make your 3D star. So once I printed this out and I cut it out, I traced it onto a piece of poster board and I cut that out. Then I took a pen and I laid this on top of it and I drew my, tr my lines that I was going to be folding on and when I pressed, I pressed hard enough to make an indention in my poster board. That left me what I could see to be able to fold with and there's my 3D star. So I'm going to place my 3D star right in the middle of my project. For the stars that goes around this, I wanted a little one inch star. So I went back to Google and I googled star clip art and I found a basic star. 
I saved that to my computer and I pulled it into a Word document and I made it where it was a one inch star. You can change the size of your JPEGs when you put them into your Word document. Then I copied that 11 times so that it gave me 12 stars and I printed that out. I did this on cardstock so that it would be thicker. And then once I print them out, I just cut them. So now I have my 12 little stars to go around. To mount the star, I'm just going to put a little drop of hot glue in each corner. I don't want too much and I don't want it in the middle because I'm not going to press down the middle. You have to work pretty quickly because your hot glue will dry fast. And then you have to find your center of your board and then just press down your little points. Don't press in the middle. You want to keep that 3D effect just on the points. And there's my 3D star in the center of my blue field. Now I'm going to put my little one inch stars around. I'm going to start by putting one at the top, one at the bottom, and then one on each side and then I will fill in in the middle to make my circle. And I'm just going to be using a drop of hot glue for this as well. And there it is. We've completed it. I could put a hanger on the back of it, but I think I'm actually going to stand mine up around my fireplace. I'm working on my mantle for my 4th of July display, and I think that's where I'm going to put it. If I change my mind, I will just put a hanger on the back. You can either use a regular photo hanger, or you can tie a knot in a piece of twine making a little loop and glue it onto the back. Either one would work to hang this because it's not very heavy. So let's take it downstairs, put it in place, and see how we like it. I just love how this shutter turned out. To me it looks exactly like the one that was at Hobby Lobby and I have less than five dollars in mine where it was twenty dollars at Hobby Lobby. Plus I also have the pride of knowing that I made it. We're going to be making a game for our 4th of July party on a budget. We'll need some cans, some leftover scrapbook paper and some Mod Podge, some rice and some ground cinnamon, some fabric scraps, some black paint and some white paint that I will mix together, and then some various tools that I pulled from my stash. The first thing we're going to do is make three bean bags. I'm just using scrap fabric that I had in my stash. I cut a square that is five by five as my pattern, pinned it down, and then I'm cutting two of each color. And then I will pin right sides together because I'm going to sew around on three and a half sides. And now I have my three bean bags and I'm turning them inside out. And they're not actually bean bags because the suggestion I found was to fill them with rice. I had this big bag out of my pantry and you need to fill them about two thirds full. And I actually used two thirds cup of rice in each bean bag. I just used a little funnel tapped it down and then at the end I sewed it closed. Now I'm cutting some foam board to put at the end of the cans that I showed you earlier. I don't want the sharp edges to cut any kids that might be at the party. So I'm going to do that on all six cans and if it didn't fit exactly tight enough 
I'll just put a little hot glue on there and make sure it stays. This will actually be the bottom part of our game when we're playing it. So I'm doing this to all six cans. Some of them had such a tight fit, I didn't even have to use glue actually. And now I'm mixing some black paint and some white paint. I'm coming up with kind of a charcoal gray and I'm going to paint it around the top and the sides at the top and the side at the bottom. And I'm using a technique to make this cinnamon look like rust. It works much the same as a glitter in a project. You can save it and reuse it. And when I finish it, it actually looked pretty good. The next step I'm going to do is cover the sides with the scrap paper that I had. I'm going to cover all six cans in various patriotic scrap of paper. I cut it at four inches wide and about 10 inches long. Once everything's dry, it will stay on quite well, but you can always spray, spray on a clear coat to make it even more durable. I don't know if the camera really picks it up, but in person, they look very rusty. I love how this effect turned out. And now I'm sealing the edges. I want to do one more step, and that's take some eyeshadow. I learned this trick from Trish, and I'm going to distress the pages that are too bright for this project. I just make it look kind of like some of the rust dripped down onto the can. And there it is guys, our game for our 4th of July party. I just love how this turned out and I have hardly any money in this project at all. For today's project, we have decided that we're going to go along with the theme that we have been following. For those of you who haven't been with us before, Kay and I are planning a huge 4th of July blowout. We're wanting to do kind of a Southern living on a budget. <laughs> That's what we're calling it. <laughs> and we're been excited about it. We've already started doing a few decorations here and there for it. And so today we thought that we would use this little red wagon that we found at a thrift store the last time we were together. Now, don't despair. If you don't have one of these little red wagons, you don't have to get it at a thrift store. No. I just got it for two dollars. And we were just really lucky. <laughs> you said you saw this at... I saw one at Cracker Barrel. That's right, Cracker Barrel. Seems what, like it was $12.95 maybe. That's not too bad either. And they also have them online. I did a little search online to mm -hmm. make sure that you could find one if you want to do one. I know that the little red trucks have been really popular, but we decided we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we're going to use our little red wagon. Mm -hmm. The first thing we're going to use is this foam that came from the Dollar Tree. It did come in a block. I have already split it. Kay and I are both crafting from our stash. We haven't been able to go out and shop. So we're crafting from our stash and that's why this one is already cut in half. That's right. <laughs> so we'll glue this down into the bottom of our wagon. And then we're gonna be using some of the things that we already had, that we have either had left over from other projects or maybe even from the haul videos that Kay has done. Mm -hmm. We have those, please go check those out in our channel and, and see what all we have as well as some flowers that came from a grab bag thing? 
at Michael's. It was a grab bag, but it was really a huge box of florals. And in that one box that I paid $4 for, we had over $600 worth of florals in that one box. I never find anything like that. <laughs> I never did. I got lucky. <laughs> I was so excited to see hers, and she has shared with me. So we got all these florals there from that. Mm -hmm. And what all do you have over here? Well, I have some things that we picked up at Hobby Lobby right before uh, we started staying at home. Yeah. And so I had those, and these were like 50 cents. And you have three, and they're really nice floral picks. They're pretty heavy. As we were looking at those earlier, and I think they're actually plastic or something. They, they make mm -hmm. a tinny sound whenever you mm -hmm. hit on them. So. And, those are just really cute. I we have a couple those. of packs of those. And we also, that same trip, we got a floral pick that's kind of a Uncle Sam hat. Mm -hmm. um, we have some ribbons that we want to use. Of course, they're patriotic. These are two of my favorites. And Trish will have to help me with this third item because we did take it apart because we didn't want to take a lot of time on video. This is true. These were, they're like a rusty star and springy little things to it. And it came from that same thrift store it did. that I found this wagon at. I, just, um, I probably can't show you how pretty I, yeah, it is. I don't think you can see they're it. They're stars and then you've got the rusty curly cues. And these are really cute. They look like antiques. She knew what they were called. I was calling well, them springy things. Earlier I was calling them boingy things, so at least I had graduated to springy. Thank you for letting <laughs> me know what they are. I'm <laughs> not really sure. But I just think they're too cute. And they are metal. They are. I didn't say and, that. and it's real rust on it because I got it on my hands taking it apart. I do too. So I love that. I, I'm, I want to be able to incorporate this in. For and sure. those were what? $2 for both of them? No, it was 50 cent a piece. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I, there was a pick and. The floral on it was kind of grotty, but this was the part I loved anyway. Very vintage. And this is what we wanted to use. And then I think we have a little pack of flags. We, too. of course, have our flags that will go into our project. And then we also have these little picks that Kay brought that I have, as they say they're cupcake picks. So we've got some flags and we got some stars. We may not use all of this. We like to take out more than we think we're going to need. Mm -hmm. But let's get started. Let's see. Um, okay, I'll give you these. I'll and start with the wire cutter since I have a lot of experience with I them. am going to <laughs> pass the florals to you and let you start right. cutting off some that you think that we can use. Okay. And I'm going to start putting in some greenery. This is just some little greenery that I had in another project. I've actually started taking things apart to be able to use. So I'm going to put these in first. But the, Well, actually, the first thing I need to do is glue down my phone. Because I do want to glue my phone. I'm going to try not to glue too many of my florals into it because I want to be able to change this out for every season. I'm going to put it somewhere in my living room, maybe next to my fireplace, but I want to change it out and keep it out all year round. I don't want to just use this for the 4th of July. I really am in love with this little wagon. There we go. We'll get that stuck down. And I'm just using hot glue. I'm out of E6000. So I'm hoping that the hot glue is going to hold it in here well enough. I do that at home all the time and it does. It doesn't seem to yeah, have a problem. I don't have a problem with it for florals. So I'm going to stick this in. Kay and I don't even live in the same state. We live pretty far from each other. It takes about four hours. Mm -hmm. And this being apart from each other has not been easy. No, because normally by now we would have had a lot of shows and mm -hmm. filmed together quite a bit more. We do craft shows together. If you have, if you're new to our channel and you've never seen one of our craft chats, go check it out. Especially if you're interested in doing craft shows, you think that's something that you want to be able to get into, go check it out. We have a lot of information on there. When we were first starting, we actually looked for information. Yeah. We wanted to be able to see what to expect and what we were going to need and we couldn't find very much. No, and so we decided our channel would be about the things that we had looked for and wanted to know. And that's what we talk about on Craft Chat. We mm -hmm. come together and we talk about what to expect, what would you need. Um, we even talk about funny things that happen sometimes. We do. So, go. As a matter of fact, tomorrow our craft chat will be uploaded. That's right. We typically have it up about, I don't know, somewhere around 9 o'clock Eastern, um, excuse me, Central Time, about 8 o'clock, I mean, excuse me, I can't even talk. <laughs> we normally have it up around 10 o'clock 
Eastern Time, mm -hmm. 9 o'clock Central. Um, because we're in two different time zones, we want to make sure. We just kind of split it down the we middle. We do. Right now, all I'm doing is just kind of playing around. I'm not sure how I'm going to leave these. I know I don't want it too tall, so we can, uh, we will end up maybe cutting some of them. But I do want varying lengths, and I don't want my tall stuff in the middle. I love these little roses. <laughs> these are so cute. And I will tell you, I am not a florist. I am not. We do have some florists in my husband's side of the family, mm -hmm. and they are very talented. I wish I had that talent. Unfortunately, I do mm -hmm. not have that talent. But, but you like to play around with it. They've do. done some really cute things with florals. Well, I think all I do, and if you don't do florals, this may, I just knocked that one off, Kay. I don't know what I did with it. That's okay. We'll come back to it if we need it. But I think probably all I do is just kind of stick it until I think it looks okay. Right, and it's full enough. <laughs> that's right, it's that, full enough. I work with florals a little bit, but mostly when I'm doing wreaths. That's about my forte with florals. She makes gorgeous wreaths. You guys would love her wreaths. So we're just going to continue to stick these in. We may put a little music on you. I know you get tired of hearing us yammer, as yeah. my, my daddy always said. And we'll just keep sticking things in, and we'll come back live once we get to a pleasing point, I think. got a good dimension going on and a good spread of color and hey very fourth of july very patriotic i think so too and i never claimed to be a florist i do have them in my family as i mentioned earlier but mm -hmm. i'm not one but i'm pretty happy with it and the really happy part is that we have very little in this because we're so lucky to have the florals that were almost free well that's true well out of the box that we use, mm -hmm. it, it practically is free because you pay four dollars for the whole thing, and we probably mm -hmm. use less than a dollar's worth of them. Oh yeah, and then definitely. I did use some of the ones from the Dollar Tree, right. so I probably have a couple dollars there, and then we got about fifty cent in the stars mm -hmm. and two dollars in the thing. So all in all, this cost us less than eight dollars. Yeah, and everything else we pulled from our stash. We did, so. The one thing that Kay did point out that I, I had not thought about was that you can take this and put a drop of glue here in this joint and hold this up. Well, it's actually holding itself up right now, but it wouldn't when I put a bow on it. Yeah. But I think it would be really cute with a bow up here and, and put that glue there to help mm -hmm. hold it. I'm not going to do it tonight because I'm out of wire edged ribbon. I... I'm completely out. When I get back home, I'm going to mail her some. <laughs> Thank goodness, because she says she's got some, and I, I, I can't go and buy any. So when she sends me some, we'll make a bow, and we'll put on there. But in the meantime, I think maybe we, we did not use these rusty bows because we couldn't really get them in there, but I think it might actually be cute if we did it on the front. Oh, I do like that. I think that works out. Good. That looks I think really that'll good. be the crowning touch. So we'll cut off one of our dowels. And wow, there it went. <laughs> like champagne, poof, right up the thing. We'll wire this on here and then try to stick it down in there and let it stick out the top because I absolutely love these rusty bows. I do too, those were a find. I can't help it. Do you think we should put a couple of the little stars sticking up? Yeah, we can do that. We'll just twist those around like that and kind of let them stick up all different ways. And then let's turn this around and see right. if we can put it kind of in the front. And we do have the back decorated as well. We'll stick this down right here. I love the antique finish. 
get that down in there and let our flowers come back up. And there we go. Let's turn it around. Turn it and look and see what you think, okay? I love it. I think it turned out great. So there you have it. You don't have to be a florist to make something for your home, mm -hmm. for your party. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. If you've tuned in at all the last few weeks on Wednesdays, you've heard me say, when life gives you lemons, make something sweet. Well, that's what I want to do this Wednesday. I wanted to take the top part of this old-fashioned oats box. I used the bottom half not too long ago, and I made a bunny hat for Easter. Well, I thought we would turn this into a 4th of July decoration. We are going to make a hat. We're going to make a hat a little differently, though. We'll use some of the same directions, but we'll change it up. To cover our hat this time, we're going to use this cut-off blue jean leg. I've taken it apart after that, so I have a nice big piece. Our can is about 17 inches to, or maybe 16 around, somewhere in between there. So we're going to use this to cover our can in just a moment. That's going to be our base. We're going to use this box. Let me turn it over. Hard to keep it on camera, but this is a box lid that would be covering a box of printer paper that many offices have. I don't know why this was at my house, but thank goodness it was because I don't have a lot of materials here. So I'm going to use this to cut the brim of our hat. And we'll get that together in just a little bit. I also pulled some things that I got last year at Hobby Lobby on clearance. As 4th of July was winding down last year. I got these glitter stars. They're about four inches diameter. So I thought those may or may not work. We will try. And if not, We'll cut our own stars, cover them, and use them on our hat. I also found this confetti. I usually call it table scatter. And I thought we might could pull some things for that because it has stars of all sizes. I also have some cupcake picks. Red and blue and silver ones. Thought those might work in the scale that we're using. I have some cupcake picks that are American flags. That might work. And the last things I have are some bling stickers, if you will. Stars, of course. And I have these little plastic stars. Those might work on our project. And one red one. So this is some of the things that I pulled for us to use. I also pulled out some more Chanel stems because we can use these, wrap them around a pencil, and we can make things spring out from our hat. I couldn't, of course, go shopping and get any of the ones that are already made that I've seen in Hobby Lobby and Michael's. So we'll just have to make our own. So now I have drawn the circles on the cardboard. This is to be the brim of my hat. Since the box is about five in diameter, this is a nine inch brim. I also have the top of my can traced out onto the cardboard. And I'm going to use that and cover it with fabric after I cut it out, and then that will be my final touch to put on top of the can to make it look nice and neat. Because I don't want to cover the plastic top that's on there. I just don't think that will be very smooth. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut these out. I have my two circles cut out from my paper box. You can still see the pattern on the back. I am going to cover them with the blue jean fabric that I'm going to use on the side of my can. I think I'm going to make sure that I use this nice seam here to be the top part of my can. I think that will give it a lot of character. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and use it to cut out the fabric. I'm going to cut just above this seam and make sure this goes right around the edge of my can and then this will overlap on my can and hold it in. That'll make sense in just a moment. Let me cut this out first and I'll be right back. I used a simple dressmaker's tape and ran it around the side of my can, and that's how I decided how long I wanted to cut my fabric. Well, it is approximately 16 inches, maybe a little more, because you have to accommodate for the plastic lid. So I cut my blue jean fabric about 17 inches so I would have some play with it. 
I want this cute seam to be at the very top of my can. So I'm going to run my fabric around and fold it over on the top, the excess. And then we will glue a separate piece here to cover our top very nicely. So that is my plan. I'm going to use a combination of E6000 and also my hot glue gun. The hot glue gun will let it attach immediately and it will dry right away. And the E6000 will dry later and have a much stronger bond. So that's where I'm going to get started. Just going to get a bead of glue here. And then we'll also wrap the excess under. mostly covered. I have it turned down here on top and I cut a little more around it so it didn't fold in too far. So that looks pretty good. This is the way the side is looking. This will be the top of course. The next thing I'm going to do is take the circle that I cut out, cover it with blue jean material, and then glue it down on top. Just to show you the bottom, I have it all tucked in and it's not quite as pretty inside there, but it really doesn't matter. I needed to use it to pull my hat in tight. And so I got the fabric pretty tight. It looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it looks cute. And I think as we put all the elements into it, all of those things will make it quite cute. Um, and this is, of course, the brim of our hat. And we'll cover that. Excuse me, it'll go that way. But we'll cover that also with some blue jean material. We'll make this back seam. I like how I cut that seam off also. That was actually the very bottom of the blue jeans, and that makes a nice tuck for the back of our hat. I thought that looked really cute. Probably would look cute with a button right in the middle of it too. So that's just another thought. But that will be glued onto our base, and so that will give us our hat. The next thing I'm going to do is cover these two circles and I'll probably use again E6000 and hot glue. So here are my two circles that I just covered. I went in and trimmed as close to the edge as I could. I may have to do a little more trimming. Sometimes it's easy to miss. 
and you probably could tell, but I'm not sure, but the blue jean fabric I used was an old pair of blue jeans, but it had a lot of stretch and a lot of give in it. So I really could pull it snug and then tuck it nicely around these edges. This, of course, is my top. Let's bring over the hat. And this will go on here. I will glue that down. I'll have to put something heavy on it to make sure it sticks real well. Let me turn it to the side and let you see. So we'll have a nice finished top to go on our hat in just a moment. And this is the brim, of course, and that will be glued down just like so. So our hat is beginning to come together. Let me go off and glue everything together, and then the next step we'll do is the fun step because we'll start decorating our hat. Well, I love how it turned out, and my first decision I made was that I'm going to take this natural jute and run it around my brim here. I'm going to use my hot glue gun and hope that that will just hold it fine. That's going to be my next decor. I found this ribbon to put around my hat like so. It's a great quality ribbon. But then I decided I wanted something a little different, a little more into the 4th of July. So I found this ribbon in my stash and it is from Hobby Lobby got it on sale, but it's too thick, too much depth, and I think it will take away from the other decorations on the hat. Well, I came up with a plan. I am going to fold the ribbon, fold this part down, and then again the same amount up, like so, and I'm going to glue this all the way around and put that on my brim. Let me see if I can hold it for you. And I think that will look a lot better. I just think the whole width is just not a good size to use on my hat because it takes up too much visual space. So I think that will be really cute. So let me go off and glue these and I'll be right back. The picks that I had, I decided I would use and take the star off the top. Some of them remove easier than others. And then that leaves a little gap there Take a chenille stem, cut it in half, take my pin, twist it around, and then once you remove it, loosen the curls. And so then we take a little glue, and I'll do that in a moment, and place it where our pick used to be. And those will kind of stick out from our hat and look really cute. Let me show you the hat so far. I put the sisal around the edge and then I have this cute ribbon around it. I actually ran it from the middle of the back and that covers up the seam and then left the seam here in the front. I just turned it under and made it really nice. But we're going to add some things. We might put some flowers on here. I have some red and some blue, and I also have a white flower. Then I want to have some stars. And then also, I realize all that fell. <laughs> and then I have about a flag. You can't get more 4th of July without a flag. So let me finish it off, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, there we have it. I've placed it on my piano for now, and then we'll find the final resting place as I continue to decorate my house. For today's project, I went out to my husband's shed and I looked around to see what he had that I could use maybe to make something out of. And I found that he had a stash of paint stirrer sticks, which are perfect. So I thought, well, we'll make a palette sign out of them. So I grabbed a handful of them and while I was out there, I went ahead and took two and used his miter box and saw, a little hand saw, and just cut them down so that they can work across the back of the frame. Now, these paint stirrer sticks have measurement marks on them and I don't want that to show up in my project so I'm going to turn them face down and because they have this little notch in them I'm going to turn one up one down so that the notch doesn't line up so that it gives me just a small place because when I put them side by side it leaves a pretty good um, space there but if I turn them it's not so bad. So I'm going to turn them up and down and line them up so that 
they all fit together and then we're going to take and glue them together okay so I used my ruler and got them pretty even and I think that that is the look that I want I like how that looks so we're going to use some Gorilla wood glue and our glue gun to glue these together the wood glue is going to give it a more permanent hold but the glue gun will give it a fast hold because the wood glue doesn't dry very fast and it would move around if I didn't use the hot glue to hold it in place Okay, so I have my glue sticks glued together. I did end up only using hot glue in between because my wood glue is a little clumpy and it didn't want to go smoothly on there. But when I flip it over and I use my cross bar on here, I'm going to use the wood glue because then I'll have a stronger hold. And there I have my palette sign. I think it's adorable. I really like how it turned out. I'm going to use my white, or excuse me, I'm going to use my ivory Waverly chalk paint. I'm almost out of the white, so I'm trying to force myself to go with something that's a little different. I know ivory is not drastically different, but it is a little bit different than the white, and I have a lot of it, so I'm going to use it, and I'm just going to paint my sign. I finished painting my palette sign and now I'm going to lay it to the side and let it dry and then once it's dry I'm going to take probably a sharpie and kind of go on the edges and hit it and try to distress it a little bit so let's first lay that to the side now I knew I wanted to use a cross on my palette sign so I googled cross SVG or silhouette cross or something to that nature and I found a shape that I liked so I printed it and I cut it out of paper and then I traced it onto a piece of scrap foam board that I had and I cut that out so now what I want to do is I went into my stash of scrapbook paper that I have and I found these two and I've used them for crosses before I make prayer crosses and I've used these for that purpose and that's what I want to do with this one I want it I want to make part of it with the stripes and part of it with the stars so I'm just going to flip it over find me a spot and I'm going to take my pencil and trace out the part that I want to use. So I cut out my paper the way I wanted it to fit on my cross. First I will put down my stripe paper and decoupage that and then I will come back and put the stars on top of that so that it kind of crosses over and I have that ragged edge there that I like. I really love the look of that. But before I do that I don't want the edges of my foam board to look like foam board so I'm going to use my black Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to go around the edges and paint the edges I think that the chalk paint is going to give it the matte finish that I'm wanting I painted the edges of my cross and now it doesn't look so much like foam board it looks kind of like ragged wood which is what I was basically wanting so now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge my paper onto my cross
I put a good coat of Mod Podge on top of my cross too so that it can dry and seal that all in and then once it has I will go around and cut my edges of my paper because it hangs off a little bit and I would much rather it be that way than to be too small so I'll just let that dry and then we'll trim it up so let's set that to the side and let's go back to our palette I did think about using a Sharpie on the edges of my palette to give it um, a distressed edge, but I think I'm just going to use a little bit of chalk paint on a small brush and just kind of dab that off and then just hit those edges. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to kind of be worn. If you get too much on when you're working on distressing, don't worry about it. You can always go back over with your base color, which in my case was an ivory, and touch that back up so that it doesn't show. And you always can put as little or as much distressing on it as you like for your taste. My little palette sign is dry now. You can see that I distressed it. There were some areas that I got too much of the black paint on so I went back over it with some ivory and now it has a really nice aged look to it and I really like how it looks. My cross is just about dry. It's a little tacky in some areas but it's where I want it to be and I did trim up those edges so that they fit nicely and I cut a piece of twine that I want to use to hang my palette with. Because it's so lightweight, it will only take a piece of twine to hold it. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and attach my twine before I add the pieces to my sign because I don't want to mess them up by flipping it on its back after I've attached them. So I'm going to do like I've done in so many other projects. I'm just going to cut my twine and then I'm going to cover it with hot glue. Okay, so my twine hanger is attached and that makes my sign ready. So now I'm going to attach my cross. I'm going to try to use some of my Gorilla Glue so that it will have a good hold to it. And I'm going to put it like in the middle and then I will put hot glue on it to give it a fast hold. Our cross is attached and now we're going to add our wording. I did cut my wording out using my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut or any kind of cutting machine, you can always do the technique that I keep showing you guys where you print out the words that you want, scribble on the back with a pencil, and then transfer it onto your boards and you can paint it or use a Sharpie or some kind of paint pen. If you don't want to do that you can always get stick on letters they sell them at the dollar tree they have them at walmart at hobby lobby all kinds of places you could do that or i even sell the wording that i use on my signs i sell it as well if you're interested and you would like to have the words for this project let me know and i will get with you and i can cut those for you and send them to you so i have them already weeded. I'm going to use my transfer tape. I did already put it on this one and because the wording is longer and I'm reusing a piece of tape that wasn't quite long enough I did put it on sideways but that's okay. And now we're going to peel the paper away from the wording. You don't peel the tape away you peel the paper away because you're um letters will come up if you try to do it the other way. 
Now I know that I want this one to go across the top. Once you get your letters pressed down real well, you want to use something and press really well so that they will stick. Then you're going to remove your tape and you want to do it gently so you don't pull your letters back up. And if they look like they're sticking, just press down real well and most of the time they will stay. And then you can go back in and use your finger and just press them down real well. And now we'll do the other piece. And this one is going to go straight across the bottom. I just want to make sure that I get it straight. And there's our sign. I think I really like it. Let's go hang it up and see how it turned out. I decided to incorporate my sign into my gallery wall and I think it fits perfectly. I am so pleased with how this project turned out. It looks exactly like I had in my mind. We decided we needed some really cute front door decor. Kay already had this S and since both of our last names start with S, we knew we could turn it into an adorable red, white, and blue project. We're going to be using some fabric. We're going to Mod Podge it on and that'll make it a little more durable than if we use scrapbook paper because in the South we have a lot of sun. We also are going to use this patriotic ribbon to make us a bow. Mm -hmm. So let's get everything organized and then we'll get started. To begin our project, we removed all of the embellishments from the front and then we put on a nice coat of paint. Here we're just laying out the fabric so we can get an idea for how it's going to look and where we want one fabric to end and the other one to begin. We did know that we wanted the blue fabric on top and that we wanted to use that red and white stripe as a diagonal on the bottom. We start putting down our Mod Podge where our bottom fabric is going to be because if you put it all over it has a tendency to dry out really fast. You do want to do just one section at a time, a small one. Here you see that we are spreading it out really good, getting all those air bubbles out, getting the wrinkles smoothed out. But the good news is fabric is much more forgiving than paper. This is true. It won't tear and if you make a mistake you can actually lift it and put it back down again. Here we're piecing together our stripes. We want to make sure that they match perfectly. And you know we're using a few pieces together there of scrap. If you have one big piece, you don't have to do that. That's very true. But we wanted to save money and just use what we had so we didn't go and try to find another piece. Here we're cutting off the excess before it goes into the bigger part of the S. We thought it would be easier if we did it here at the thinner part and then you wouldn't have that big lump under the other part. Add a little bit of Mod Podge. And then we're going to make sure we match up these stripes as well. And if you're matching pieces of fabric, you want to make sure you get some glue under every edge so that they are perfectly sealed. That's true because while we had Mod Podge on the wood, we didn't have it on that piece of fabric that it was lapping over. Here we are applying our blue fabric. We put the blue on top of the red and white because it already had a nice edge and that we knew it would look better that way. Once again, smoothing it out. Now we apply another layer of Mod Podge on top of our fabric. Don't worry about it looking cloudy because this stuff dries really clear. It does. You won't be able to tell it once it gets dry. It's one of my favorite mediums to work with. Mod Podge also will stiffen up this fabric. Once we start cutting it, you won't have to worry about it snagging or pulling. And it's also good for the elements when you're placing something outside, which we're going to do. Now we're going to do the crowning touch on our project by making a simple bow out of a one and a half inch ribbon. It's wired, so it's quite easy. I'm still impressed that you can do this with just your hands. I'm sure I would have to have a tool. <laughs> Most of the time I do use my easy bow. But this is a simple five loop ribbon. I 
see that you're using a chenille stem to tie it off with. I like to use chenille stems. They work really well and they're not expensive. I think I've seen you use zip ties as well. I have. Dovetailing those ends. Giving it a little fluff. And there's our bow. Now we're going to start trimming our fabric. Our Mod Podge is finally dry and it's stiff, so we just take our Zacto knife and run around those edges. And it really didn't take that long. I was surprised. Well, once we got a fresh blade, it worked a lot better. <laughs> That's true as well. <laughs> you want to make sure you don't have a dull blade, but this works a lot better than scissors. You are so right. It gets really close to that edge and you don't have to worry about jagged pieces and put on the crowning touch, a little glue, and we're placing our bow towards the center where the two fabrics meet. It's our door hanger. I just love it. And we have hardly any money in this project. And there's our firecrackers and our door hanger in their proper place. For our first craft, we're going to be using these block pieces that I got from a construction site. I was out walking and saw one of the guys that worked there and asked him if he had any wood pieces he didn't want and he gave these to me. They were quite dirty so I sanded them down real well and then I wanted to seal them with a coat of ivory chalk paint from Waverly. I knew that with this wood being old it would be very porous so it needed that base coat in order to make the acrylic stick well. I'm going to be painting my pieces red, white and blue. I'm going to be using acrylic paint that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the red and the blue. I got a really good coverage after that second coat. It looked really good. But for the white, I wasn't so impressed. It was really thin and if I hadn't had the chalk paint on there, I don't think I would have had a coverage at all. For the red piece, I painted the top and all the sides. I'm going to be stacking these blocks so I wasn't really worried about the bottom because I knew it wasn't going to show. For the blue piece, I painted all the sides and the bottom. If this piece is picked up and turned over, I wanted it to have that finished look. For the white piece, I was only concerned with the sides because it's going to be in the middle and you won't see the top or the bottom. I wanted to add wording to my blocks. My handwriting isn't great. I do not like how I letter things. So I decided to use iron on vinyl. My sister told me this trick a while back and I actually tried it a couple of weeks ago and I loved the result. Now on this red piece, it did bleed over onto that white a little bit. I think I moved my iron when I was pressing it down and it caused it to bleed, but that's no problem because I can touch it up at the end with a little bit of paint. For the red and the blue, I used a holographic iron-on vinyl and it didn't stick so well at the beginning, but I just played with it a little bit and made sure that everything was stuck down and then I put the cover back over it and ran over it with the iron again and now it's sealed perfectly. I really love how this iron-on vinyl looks. It actually looks like you painted the letters onto the wood. Another plus of it is all the craft stores sell iron-on letters, so if you don't have a cutting machine, you could easily pick some up from there and use it in your projects. But if you've got a good handwriting, you wouldn't have to worry about this step. You could just draw or paint them on. Here I'm going back and touching up where the red bled over onto my letters. By the time I was through, you couldn't even tell it. Now we're going to stack our blocks. And then I want to use some red, white, and blue tool and I'm going to tie them together. I didn't put glue between them because I didn't want them stuck together. I might decide to use them as something else in the future. So I just decided to tie them together to give it a finished look. I really like how tool looks when you tie it in a bow. It fluffs out and it gives it such a pretty finish. 
Now that we have our bow tied, I'm going to cut off these ends and then fluff it out so that you can see all the different colors. And there's our project. I really love how this one turned out. I think it's going to be the perfect addition to Kay and I's Southern Living on a Budget 4th of July party. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. For this project, we're going to take this adorable little mason jar sign that I got at the Dollar Tree and we're going to turn it into an even more adorable patriotic sign. I really do love how this looks, but I have something else in mind for it, so we're going to take it apart. The first thing I'm going to do is pop off these little 3D pieces that are on here. I'm going to use my little Cricut tool and just kind of get underneath it and pop it off. I'm going to put these to the side because I love lemons. Kay and I have a lemonade stand and I'm sure that I can find something to do with this. So we'll just put it aside for later. Now I'm going to take my rope off. I will be using part of it when we're through, but I'm going to take it off of here right now. And that leaves us with this. Now I don't want the handle on mine. I don't need the handle on mine. So I'm going to take my crafting knife and I'm going to cut the handle off. I also want to cut this little bit of the straw off at the top. I don't want that sticking up up there. So I'm just going to take my pencil again and go right around and make a mark. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and just cut it off. Okay, so now I just have the jar, which is what I wanted. I do want to go and smooth out these edges here and here and then take off the glitter that's on here. So I'm going to run out to the shed and use a little piece of sandpaper. I can't find my sanding block. So I'm just gonna run out there and use my husband's little sander and sand down these edges and the, get the glitter off and I will be back. Okay, so I just used a little bit of a sander and kind of sanded down my edges. You can totally use the little sanding block from the Dollar Tree. I just could not find mine. It would absolutely do that for you. When I started sanding, um, the paper started lifting off and I just kind of went with that and started peeling it off because I don't want it to separate after I start putting everything else on it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and peel off the rest of the paper as best I can and get this pretty smooth. Okay, so now I've got all of it peeled off. You totally do not have to do that step. I just did it because it started lifting. You can use the other side of the um, board as well. It's totally smooth and that would work. And as a matter of fact, I probably am gonna use this side. I just didn't want all that peeled up stuff left on this side. That's just my OCD. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to take some of my modeling paste. You can also use the spackle that you get from um, the Dollar Tree. I don't have any of that so I'm just going to use what I have on hand and I have this on hand and all I'm going to do is fill in my little holes here. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I have this piece of fabric that I've had for about three years. So I'm going to actually decoupage this piece of fabric onto this mason jar. I'm not going to do the top. At the top I'm going to paint it gray and put some glitter because yes I love glitter. Kay and I both do. We are pink girls. We are glitter girls. So I think I'm going to do that. I want to get as much of this star and this freedom here as I can on my mason jar. So I think that's going to be good. I'm going to flip it over and take a pen and trace it out on my fabric and then cut it out. So there's our piece of fabric cut out. I'm going to lay it to the side. My next step that I want to do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to kind of go over these edges and color them in so that they will just kind of disappear 
whenever I put everything together. Okay, now my edges are finished. You don't have to do that step either. I just like how it kind of makes it disappear, so I always do that. I am out of gray paint, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my ivory chalk paint and pour it out here on my piece of cardboard. It won't take a lot. And I'm going to mix a little of this black chalkboard paint that I got from the Dollar Tree in with it to make me a gray color. And that gave me a gray color. I like some of the streaks that's still in there, so I'm gonna leave those. And now I'm just gonna take a brush and I'm gonna paint this top part. Now my paint is dry, I'm going to put a little bit of my Mod Podge over it and then I'm going to sprinkle some glitter on it. Now I'm going to take and put a good layer of Mod Podge all over the base of this and I'm going to attach my piece of fabric to it. Before I do that though, I'm going to use just a little bit of hot glue and stick my fabric down so that I have that nice edge. top where I bent it over I think it needs a little extra help so I'm just going to put another little bleed, bead of glue right there on that seam that I made and then whenever I flip it up it should stick into the glitter now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to trim off the fabric that I have around the edges. I knew I was going to have extra. I wanted it that way because I would rather have extra to trim off than have it too short. And there's our patriotic mason jar. I really do love it. I do think I want a bow right here. I'm just going to do a small one. I have some pieces of ribbon that I had left over from something else. And then I have this burlap ribbon that I just always really like. I think I'm going to make three simple bows and then stack them on top of each other. The way I like to do my bows is I simply take my ribbon and I fold it over itself so that it looks kind of like an X in the front. And then I just pinch in the middle and I tie some twine around it. I think that's going to be a good size. So I'm going to clip that off. And then I take a piece of twine and I wrap it around a few times and tie it off. So I made all three bows and I keep playing with them trying to decide if I like it stacked and I actually think I do. I think I like that, that I can see all of it. So I'm going to put some glue in between each one to hold it together and then I will probably wrap it all with a piece of twine. And there's our layered bow. I'm actually really pleased with that. I like it a lot. I'm going to attach it right here on this corner. So I'll put down some hot glue and stick it in. Now I want to make a hanger so that I can hang it and I think all I'm going to do is take the piece of twine that I came off the back or off the top of it, if you remember it was up here, I'm going to tie a knot in it. I'll trim it up some and then I'm going to flip my mason jar over and I'm going to attach it right here on the back with hot glue. I'm just going to just literally put a bunch of hot glue on there and let it set and then it will be finished. Once our glue has set, I'll take it downstairs and hang it up and we'll have a look at how it turned out. And there's our little patriotic mason jar. I love how it turned out. So our Wednesday project for this week, of course, is a patriotic sign to go next to my fireplace. Well, I have some scrap wood pieces. This wood piece is about five inches wide. I have two of them and 37 and a half inches long. These are some scrap pieces that were cut off some projects that Trisha and I did back last fall. And these were just the ends that they cut off at Home Depot when they cut the size that I needed. Thank goodness I have 
two of them, and they there are the exact same size. Didn't have to do any cutting. I'm going to put a coat of paint on them, and we're going to do some letters a little bit different way than I've done them in the past. In the past, I've used my computer and printed out some letters, cut them out, and then cut them out of foam board. Well, I don't want to cut these out of foam board this time. I'm going to cut them out of some colorful scrapbook paper so they look more like they're painted on the sign. So it'll have a more flat texture this time. So I have some blue with white stars. And these are just ones I pulled out of my stash. I would love to be able to shop, but we're not allowed to leave just yet. If you have uh, any underlying illnesses they don't want you to leave or it's not a good idea so i'm going to wait about another week before i get out of the house so anyway here's the red i'm going to use it's very sparkly i don't know if that shows up well on camera but it's very glittery but it is scrapbook paper i also have this striped diagonal and i think i want to get my letter where i get some white blue and red on it so i'm going to do that also I have this small piece of scrapbook paper that came out of a book. That's the size it came in. I didn't cut it. You can see the little hole at the top. That's how it was in the book. In the book. And I have this blue and white plaid. I guess it's the right word. Or gingham. You can use that word also. So that is the paper I'm going to be making my letters out of. My letters this time, I told you I'm not going to do them the way I always seem to do them. I'm going to cut them with my Cricut. My Cricut is an old Cricut, but it is my favorite one. It is the first one I got probably 10 years ago. It's an, the first expression that came out. So I'm going to use that. I also have some foam stars. I got these on clearance last year at Hobby Lobby. So I have the red, the white, and the blue. And I think these will be cute on my sign. If I use these, I will have to put these on after I decoupage my letters on. I'm going to use Mod Podge to do that. And then I'll use Mod Podge on my entire board because the paint I'm using is flat wall paint from Walmart. It was the only thing I could get. Again, I couldn't go in the store, so I placed an online grocery order. And that's the only paint I could get, so we're going to use it. I also pre-made some bows. I used my Easy Bow Maker and made those. I have a tutorial somewhere in my videos if you want me to link it below. I will. I am not the best bow maker in the world, but with Easy Bow, it, the name says it all, doesn't it? So that's what we're going to be doing, and my sign is going to say, I Heart USA. So let's move along, paint the board, and get started. I'll get those letters cut off screen and come back. laid out so you can see it. Nothing is glued down yet. I'm going to use some of this washi tape and I'm going to carefully tape down my items so that they are evenly spaced. And then I'm going to use Mod Podge and put the items on my board. I had to zoom out quite a bit so you could see the entire thing because it's about 37 and a half inches tall. But this gives you a good idea of the layout. Then, and now I will space them evenly apart. So I have my letters laid out on my board. I have them taped down with some washi tape. I'm just going to use this paintbrush and some Mod Podge and Mod Podge this part down. I've removed the bow, but you may notice I have uh, a nail up in the top and that's how I attach my bow. And then I can always change it out if it gets squished or I don't like it anymore or it fades. So the next thing we're going to do is use a generous amount of Mod Podge, put it on the back of each of these, and place them down. 
And then after that, we'll also give the entire board a coat of Mod Podge, the top of the letters, and all of the white paint, because this is a flat white paint, and that'll just help seal it. So let's get started. put on have been Mod Podged, including the heart at the top because that's also scrapbook paper. I'm going to re-add our bow to the very top. I just have a nail on the board if you remember. The star is actually a foam with glitter on top, so I did not Mod Podge that on. I'm going to add that with some hot glue here, and then probably a couple more embellishments, and then I'll take it in the house, put it by the fireplace, and show you how it looks. So I thought I would give you a close-up look while I have the project in my studio. I'm sorry if the camera shakes a little bit. I've got to hold it by hand so I can get in real close for you. I wanted to show you that I added a few additional elements, just some stars that I had in my collection, in my stash. I thought it would just add a little something extra. I made a tiny mistake on my A. So that covered it up nicely. Just another decorative element. And it gives a little more color so you don't have all that white just standing out. So there it is guys, resting to the left side of my fireplace. For today's Tutorial Tuesday, I headed over to Home Depot. So I'm at Home Depot and I am getting four by fours. You can see there, there, and the one I'm getting is a four by four by ten. You see here, that's how much it costs. I purchased a piece of four by four by ten and I had them cut it for me. I do have a couple of saws and I am comfortable cutting wood. I actually love doing woodwork, but my saw won't cut a four by four in one clean cut. It will only do it in two cuts and it's just easier to have them do it for me. So I had the guy cut it into these pieces for me. The first one was a 20 inch piece, then he cut me a 26 inch piece, then a 32 inch piece, and that left me with a 42 inch piece. We're going to use these three pieces for one project. Then we're going to use this leftover piece for the second project. For the second project, you're going to need other items with it as well. We'll talk about those when we get to it. What we're going to make is this dupe from Kirkland's. I saw these fireworks on their website and I knew that I had to make them. As Kay and I have told you in several of our videos, we were planning a huge 4th of July party, but we're trying to do it on a budget. I wanted those fireworks, but I did not want to pay $50 for them. I knew that a 4x4 would work perfectly for this. Now, the Kirkland's fireworks are actually 6x6, but I didn't want 
that big. That's really heavy. A 4x4 four four works perfectly for me. So let me get all this cleaned up and we'll start on our first project. Okay, so for our first project, we're going to be making fireworks. I'm going to turn all my boards and find my top. I want the piece that is the nicest looking for the top. I think this one is the only one that he actually broke when he was cutting it. He just kind of clipped off one of the edges, but that's okay. I'll just make that be the bottom. So we'll turn it this way and it can sit up with that little clip part down at the bottom and no one will ever notice it. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure off how much of it that we want to paint blue. Since this project is going to sit outside, I actually went ahead and got my paint from Home Depot while I was there. I went over to the paint counter and I got them to make me two samples. These are about $4 each and it's plenty of paint for what I need for this. I didn't want to buy a whole gallon, so this is what I got. The colors that I ended up getting were the Firecracker and Tanzanite, but you can choose any red and blue that works for you. As long as they look kind of like what we use on the flag, that's all I was going for and I like these two colors. So the first thing I want to determine is how far down I want to go on my wood with the blue part. That's the parts at the top that's going to have the stars in it. For the 42 inch piece, I think I want to go 11 inches. On my 26 inch, I think I'm going to go down 9 inches. And then on my 20 inch, I'll go down 7 inches. Now, since I'm wanting to paint this part blue, I do want to kind of have a crisp line. So I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to put it right below my mark so that everything from there up will be painted blue. Okay, so now I have my 4x4 measured off all the way around and taped. Now I'm going to take my tanzanite and I'm going to paint the top of each one. Okay, so now I have all three pieces painted with the tanzanite blue. I'm going to set them over and let them dry. It's rainy out here, so I'm not sure how long it's going to take. I will probably go get my blow dryer and try to help it along because this has to be completely dry so we can lift our tape and retape it to make our stripes going up and down. So I'll be right back. Our blue paint is dry and I've taken off the tape. Now I'm going to put tape on it again and I'm going to come right to the end of the blue and then I'm going to paint all of the bottom white. I want to go ahead and do that. That's just my preference. You can go ahead and tape it off and do white, red, white, red if you want to. But I think what I'm going to do is completely paint it white and then when it dries we'll come back and we'll tape it up for our red stripes. So let's do that. Our white paint and our blue paint are completely dry now. I did end up using two coats of each and I like the coverage that I was able to get. So now we're going to tape up and do our stripes. I know that my wood is not as wide as the wood that they used at Kirkland's. So that's gonna make my stripes look a little bit different from theirs. My wood is three and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put my tape about the middle point because it's a little less than an inch and that's okay. It's going to make my red stripes bigger but I need to go along this edge with the white paint after everything has dried. So I think that it's still going to turn out fine. I'll have two reds, a white, and then the corners of it will be white. So I think that's going to work. So let's take our tape and tape it up. Okay, so now I've got my tape put down. I put one strip down the middle, which is going to leave a white stripe there, and I'm just going to paint the rest of it with my red paint. Our red paint is now dry, so I'm going to go ahead and take my tape off. I hope I have a nice clean line, but I'm afraid I'm going to have, yeah, I did have some, um, bleeding over on it. That's okay though. I'll just take a brush and, and touch that up. I kind of figured that was going to happen because all I had was paper tape. I didn't have any painter's tape. If I had painter's tape, I wouldn't have had that problem. So all I'm going to do now is just remove all of our tape. Now all of our tape has been taken off. I do need to do some touch up. I have some bleeding on it that I need to fix. And I'm going to hit these hard edges with my white paint. I'm going to take a small brush 
and then I'm just going to lightly go along those edges. I don't want to make it huge, I just want to show the white. Just like that. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I'll just keep dipping in it though and going along. If I get off, it'll be okay. When I'm touching up my red, I'll just touch that up as well. That's why I wanted to do this first. So if I made a mess, I could fix it. And that's all I'm going to do is just go along those edges. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to do my touch-ups. I'm going to finish all my edges and then I'll be back. Now everything is dry and it's ready to go. I have everything touched up and I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's my art and that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do is add some stars. I bought this pack of foam and foil stars from Walmart. I think I paid like $1.97 for it. And I was gonna just use one of the foam ones for a stamp, but I decided I really like how defined they are and some of them are white. So I'm just going to add some to it. Now the one on the Kirkland's website, they just used three large ones, but I think that we're just going to add some however we want to. They don't have to be in any particular order. We're just going to stick some on. So our fireworks are almost finished. We have them all painted and touched up and I got my stars on it. My pack of stars didn't have enough of one size to do all three. So what I ended up doing was I put small stars on the little one. I put medium stars on the medium one and then I used the large stars on the large one. So the last part of this is that we have to attach our wick. Now you can do this many ways. You could glue it onto the top. You could use a staple gun and staple it onto the top. But what I'm going to do is actually drill a hole in mine and then glue my wick down in the hole. That way it's attached down inside of it. So I have my drill. I'm going to put on a bit for it and then I'm just going to drill a hole right in the center of each post. Now I have a hole in the top of each one of my fireworks. I'm going to take some sisal rope and I'm going to cut a piece off for a wick and I'm going to put some glue on it and stick it down in there and glue it in. Okay, so now we have three firecrackers and I am so happy with how they turned out. I think they look every bit as good as the ones on the Kirkland website. The last part of this is going to be that I'm going to set them together and I'm going to tie some twine around them to hold them. But I will do that when I get them set up on the porch. So let's go put them in place and see how they look all together. And there's our fireworks. I love how they sit on the side of the door. I did decide not to use twine to bind them together. I kind of like them just sitting the way they are. So I think I'm going to leave them that way. These turned out so cute and they didn't cost a fortune to make. I think I probably have about $8 in the whole set. Let's get crafting, y'all. It's another Wednesday. The first thing I'm going to do is take some tongue depressors out, popsicle sticks, whatever you would like to call them. These came from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to use less than one pack. So the first part of this project will have a little glue and less than one pack. The first thing I did with these popsicle sticks, you can probably tell they're a little shiny. That's because I put them in some water and soaked them for a good 12 hours so they would be more pliable. What we're going to do is create a basket weave effect. It's a little tricky at first because you just got to hold a lot of things in your hand at once. So we've kind of got them every other one and I'm going to take three more and put into this project. Bear with me because it's going to be really cute and very farmhouse looking. The next thing we have to do is weave it the opposite way. Like I said, it's a little tricky. If you kind of keep it towards the top, it does help. Got to get behind that one. So let's slide this one down. I'm only going to put four. I put five in to start my weave and then I'm going to put four actually into this pattern. 
There we go. If I let go, it will probably shoot across the room, honestly. When we get this one in, oh, got a broken one. That happens, even with soaking them. And this is real life, folks. I practiced this, of course, and did it ahead of time. It, it went a lot better then. Doesn't it always there? Okay. Let's get this fourth one in here. Make sure I've got it put together pretty well. Now, it is kind of hard to push it when they're wet like this, but that is the only way to put them in there without breaking them. I almost put that broken one back in. So we're going to get this last one in here and then line them up as best we can. The good news is once they dry, they are actually easier then to slide back and forth. But the only way you can weave them is if you get them wet first. So we'll make a nice little square and a basket weave. By the time we finish, this is going to be a cute farmhouse project. Once you get them in a nice square, then you want to manipulate it a little bit. Try and turn it into more of a diamond shape. That will be more important later on. And once you get it to that stage, you want to make four more, laying them on top of each other each time to get as close representation of the same shape as possible. Then take them, put them on a cooling rack, a baking rack, something. You want to leave them out flat and let them dry at least 12 hours. If you don't put them on a cooling rack, they may not get fully dry on top and bottom. And also they could mildew a little bit. So it's good to put them on a drying rack and let them dry out for the night. Now let's move on to the next part of this project. Now I have all of my pieces laid out. And now you can see it's taking the shape of a star. Is it perfect? No, it's not going to be because of the materials that I'm using. But it kind of gives a, that cute basket weave effect that reminded me of the tobacco baskets that are so popular right now. The next thing I'm going to do is take some hot glue and I'm going to go in and place some more tongue depressors in between each place and kind of manipulate them together. And also then I will turn it on the back and do the same thing. And just to let you know, I do have a little bit of glue on the back of these to keep them from sliding. Because like I said, once they dry out, they actually slide around a lot better. And you can manipulate them easily. It's just you can't weave them unless they're wet. Or at least I could not weave them that way. So the next thing I'm going to do is start putting these together. I'm going to have to pull it apart a little bit and show you what I'm doing. And then I'll probably go off camera and finish it because I don't think you want to sit here and watch me glue. I'm going to use a very generous amount. I have a better glue gun, guys, but of course you can't find it today. So I'm going to be using this little pink one. I'm not going to put the glue on the back, those two together yet. I'm going to give it some time to go together. And they're not going to be exactly straight. You're going to have to leave a little bit of a gap in there. Let's put the next one in. If you don't put too much gap, um, excuse me, glue on the back, you can always manipulate that situation too. All right, so I'm going to finish this up and I'll be right back. This is what it looks like once I manipulated it and put it together. It took a little trial and error. Um, didn't want to hold you for all of that, but it wasn't terribly hard. It was just a little tedious. I have cross pieces here where they connect on the back. Now, let me show you. I'm going to warn you it's not real pretty, but this is the back. You can see some glue. I even added cross pieces here because I just wanted it to be a little more sturdy than it was. So that's what the back looks like. And to give you some scale, this star is about 18 inches in diameter. So it's a nice size wall piece, and it's going to make a cute 4th of July decor. The next thing I'm going to do is take it outside and use some of my leftover spray paint. I just think that will be easier than sitting down and painting it with a brush. And then we'll add some items to decorate it. I have this 
five loop simple bow that I tied and I might use that on the project and I have some florals who knows but let me go outside and paint that and then we'll move on to the next step so there's our star it has a nice coat of spray paint which turned it a nice shiny white I didn't put it on real thick because I wanted it more of a whitewash effect and I just love the results and how it turned out I'm going to decorate it a little bit but I want everything to be able to be easily removed because I'm going to use it again at Christmas and I'll just change out the bows and the decor. I have, of course, the bow I showed you. I'm just going to put it through a couple of the holes here. Like so. Let me turn it over and twist it in. And then I can manipulate it from the front. Every bow needs a little fluffing once you get it together. And that's better. I think I will stick some florals in. I've left them kind of long for right now. Because I want to kind of go in, see how they're going to work, and twist them in the back. Sorry if I'm off camera. So there's one. I like that. Let's see if we can get this one in close. And put it in between these loops. I think that'll work. I'm just twisting them around the back a little bit. I'm going to come back with a chenille stem, wire them in, and then I'll cut off some of this. When I hang it on the wall, I'm not going to worry too much because it has nice holes right. I can just put a tiny nail there. It shouldn't be so bad. A lot easier to manipulate this once I pick it up and take it off camera. And there's our third rows. And I'll just tie it in with these. I'll just kind of wire them down. Because I do want everything to be able to come off very easily. But I do want to trim this up some. I've just got my jewelry cutters. I have some larger ones, but I think they're in the garage, because sometimes I film out there. All right, I'll cut this off later. So if we fluff the bow and I think I like that. At Crafting Cousins, you always find a variety of crafts on our channel. Trish specializes in wood and I specialize in paper, but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, Kay specializes in wreaths and making pretty bows. There's a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. I had to run up to the Dollar General the other day and I saw that they had all of their Easter on clearance for 85% off. Then they were also doing some kind of clearance extravaganza where you got another percentage off of anything that was on clearance. So I ended up getting four of these little signs that stand up for 12 cents a piece. They were regularly $2.50, so that was a pretty good deal. I knew I wasn't going to leave them Eastery, that I would redo them, and I do have a, something in mind to do with them. The first thing I want to do is pop off this little happy thing. Um, it's like a little banner, and it's just stuck on there. It's really cute, but I'm not going to need it for this one, so I'm just going to pop it off. And it came off real easily. I'll put that aside. You know we'll end up using it later for something else. That little piece I popped off wasn't just glued on. It also had staples in it, so I'm going to take my wire cutters and pull those out. Now we'll use our sanding block and sand over the top of it. Okay, that just took just a little bit of sanding and now it's smooth so we can paint over it. I'm wanting to paint this with my Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint, but I'm afraid that this is going to show through. I'm going to try just a little bit and see. If it does, we'll paint it black first. To paint it with white, the print that's on it is going to show through. So I'm going to first paint it with my Waverly Black Chalk Paint, let that dry, and then I'll put a coat of the ivory on. 
so I have one coat of the black chalk paint it dried and then I have two coats of the ivory chalk paint on here we're going to set it aside and let it continue to dry I knew that I wanted to put USA on my board so I went online and I found a USA that I liked I printed it out and I cut it out of paper now I'm going to mount it to my foam board I'm going to use Mod Podge and Mod Podge it on and then I'm going to use my exacto knife and cut out around it I did a generous coat of Mod Podge on the board on my paper then I applied it and I put Mod Podge over it I had to be careful when I went over the red and the white because my ink wanted to run so we're going to set this aside let it dry and then we'll come back and cut that out my little sign is dry now and I want to give it some distressing and I also want to go back and make it look like planks so I want to go back down those lines so I'm going to use an old eyeshadow palette that I have. I have found that I have pretty good control whenever I use it. So we're just going to dip our brush in it and go around these edges. Just hit these edges and make them look dirty. Now our board is dry. I am sorry my camera cut off um, on me and I didn't realize it while I was doing the distressing but you can see that I just used my eyeshadow and was able to distress it and make it look more like wood I think and I really am pleased with how it turned out. My letters are dry and I cut them out from the foam board. I also went and painted the edges of it black just so that it didn't have that foam board look to it now I'm going to glue down my letters on my board and I am going to set them closer to the bottom because I want to put a little bow up here and maybe some other decorations so I'm just going to use my glue gun and set those on and there we have our USA I love the 3d effect of it I have this ribbon that I've had for a while now and I'm going to use it and make a small bow to go up at the top the way I like to make my bows is to cross my ribbon over pinch it in the middle and just make a small bow once I have it pinched in the middle I'm just going to take a piece of twine and wrap around the middle and tie at the back. I like to do the dovetail on the bottom of my ribbon so I'm just going to fold it in half and cut a triangle and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I like the twine in the center I think it gives it a little more of a homespun look so now I'm just going to put a dab of glue and I'm going to attach it at the top of my sign. I also have this pack of foam scatter that I got from the Dollar Tree. It has the glittery stars in it and I really like those. So I think I'm going to take three of the small ones out. One red, one white, and one blue. And I'm going to use it to make some little springy things to come out of the top of my sign. I have this floral wire that I got from Hobby Lobby a while back. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and make a little hole in the bottom of my star. I'm going to cut my floral wire into three pieces. I don't really want them to be all the same length so I'm going to hold it up just so that I know that they're differing lengths. Now I'm going to put a dab of glue on the end of my wire and I'm going to stick it up in my star. I want to give my stars a springy look so I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm just going to wrap my wire around my paintbrush and then pull it off and kind of spring it out. Now that I have my wire wrapped I'm going to attach them to my sign 
behind my bow so that they come out the top. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue back here and then stick my wire into the glue and let it set. And there's our little sign completed. I am really happy with it. I think it turned out exactly like I wanted it to. So let's take it downstairs and put it in its new place and see how it looks. And there's our little USA sign. I just love this. I think it turned out so cute. And my husband said that he loved it too. So the second project that I'm going to show you today, I'm going to use this old piece of wood that I found in the shed. Now, it has also been out in the water. It also has the grooves just like the bigger piece had on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint it blue. I'm going to be using my Admiral Blue from Apple Barrel. And I'm just going to give the whole thing a good coating. Now my block is finished. I did put two coats of the blue on there and I got a good coverage. Just like with the wood I was using earlier, it has a lot of grooves in it so you have to be sure that you get in there to it. Now I'm going to add my wording. For my wording, I did go and cut this out on my Cricut. I designed the words in there and then I cut them and put them on my transfer tape. Now I'm going to position it on my block and once it's positioned on my block I'm going to take my bone folder and rub over it really well. I want it to stick to my block. I want the words to stick to my block. Now these grooves can cause issues with that as well so I have to really get down in there and press everything down in. And now let's peel our tape off. So now I have my wording on my block and I want to add some 3D stars. I made one and now I'm going to show you how to make one. I'm going to be using this piece of paper for my second star. I wanted to use it for both stars but it wasn't enough of it so I'm just going to have one out of that paper and then this one is out of the red and white polka dot. So I cut a piece of the paper that is three by five inches. To make our star we're going to fold it in half, use our bone folder and get that nice crisp line. Then I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to fold it over about halfway down on this side. So I'm going to get it about right there and use my bone folder. I want to get it crisp because I want this point to be as crisp as this one. So now we're going to take and we're going to fold it back all the way to the line. And remember, keep your point sharp. So I've got it folded back. Now for this side of the paper, I'm going to fold it over all the way make sure my point stays sharp and then I'm going to take this part and fold it back down to the side there and again make sure your point stays sharp. Take your scissors and you're going to cut at an angle. I would say stay at the same angle as this bottom piece of paper. I'm going to start from the corner here and I'm going to cut and here's my star. We're going to unfold it and we have our star. However, not all the pieces are folded right. The pieces that have the point you want to be folded up. This one wasn't so let's fold it up and then the inside fold goes in. So up and down, up and down. And once you get them all folded you open it up and you have a 3D star. Now I have two 3D stars and I'm going to hang them with some twine. I have this piece of twine that I cut for another project and it wasn't quite right so I'm going to try to use it on here. I'm going to start by gluing it here and I want to wrap it three or four times and then I'm going to cut and glue it down. 
have my twine attached and I want to attach my stars. So I found that the best way to attach my stars is to take a small piece of twine, add a dab of glue inside my star, attach my twine inside of it, and then I'm going to glue my twine down. I'll clip it off and make just a short stem and then glue it down. And there you have it. So let's go put these in their place and have a look. And there's our block sign in its new home. I love it as well. I, I'm just so tickled with how it turned out. Let's look at the items we're going to be using in our swag. The base of our swag is going to be this Christmas garland. It's very easy to twist items into the swag and it holds on to it really well. And don't worry about it being green because when we finish, we'll have so many items in there, you won't even see this garland. To attach the items to our swag, we're going to be using some chenille stems. We're just going to cut them in half and attach each item individually. You can buy these almost anywhere at any craft store. You can even order them online. They're not terribly expensive. The first thing we're going to put on the base of our swag is this $8.99 deco mesh that I got from Hobby Lobby. But I used a 40% off coupon and pretty soon it will be 50% off. The way I'm going to attach it is I take pieces about 17 inches long and I use again some chenille stems. I pull it tight on my cutting mat here. You can use any measurement that you want to use and I attach a chenille stem in between. And that gives me kind of a blousy effect and it just makes it so much easier to put it into the swag. The next item I'm going to put in our swag is this ribbon. I'm going to make some simple bows and we'll attach those, of course, again with the chenille stems. I really like the pattern with the glitter stars. This is the ribbon we're using. Mine happens to come on a 50 yard roll. It cost me $30 and so that's about 60 cents a yard. You don't have to spend all of that. Use whatever ribbon you have you can purchase it at almost any craft store. I bought the large quantity because I could get the price per yard lower and I'm going to be doing a lot of projects. The next item I'm going to be using are these floral picks. These came from Hobby Lobby. They were $3.49 each, but they have them 40% off and sometimes 50% off. They are wired. You can stretch them out and manipulate them in several different ways. These are going to be really cute and don't worry because I'm going to cut sections off and use them like one piece at a time. This is a metal star. I got these at the Dollar Tree. They were on a stake. I took the stake off by just bending it back and forth. Can't really glue the chenille stems down. It won't work out very well, but I have a solution for that. I ordered these cable ties quite some time ago. They're not very big, a nice square from Amazon. They have the little sticky on the back and you could pull that off and stick it on, but I also reinforce it with a little of this gel Gorilla Glue, place it down on my star, and then the chenille stems fit through the holes no problem attaching it to the swag. These items came from the Dollar Tree. They come three to a strand. They have like a ribbon behind them. These three came together, these three stars, and the USA. I cut those apart, of course, peeled off the backing, and took some hot glue and glued on the chenille stems. You can use a heavy beauty stapler as well, but you still want to use a drop of glue, and then you could easily twist them into your swag. I love this star. It's about 12 inches tall and I think this is going to be the top of our swag right in the middle. I think it will be the centerpiece. But this also came from the Dollar Tree. Attached the same way. This is a metal sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. I think it is so cute. I'm just going to use the holes at the top to tie it into our swag. And of course, we have some American flags. You can't have a patriotic American swag without a few flags, right? So there's four in this bag. They were $2.50. They are cloth and they're good quality. I got them at Big Lots. They do have some at the Dollar Tree now that you can use as well.
And a good way to save some money is to go and look at your Christmas ornaments. Are there a few items you could use? These red stars were in my Christmas stash, as well as these blue balls. I think these are going to make great fillers for our swag. You could also even use your Christmas ornaments that are round and sparkly. Those are going to make a great addition to our swag because they're pretty huge and they're going to take up a lot of space. So I'm excited to use those too and they didn't cost us a dime. So as you can see guys, we have a lot of items. That doesn't mean I will use all of them, but I do want to be prepared because I want this swag to be very full. So we'll head out to the porch and we'll get this party started. First, we attached our pine garland to the door frame with nails. Next, we covered that with the pre-gathered mesh using the chenille stems to wire it in. We found our center and attached it at the top and then worked our way over to each corner. Then we attached the mesh to the bottom of each side and worked our way up until we had the loops pretty even and it was appealing to the eye. Once attached, we fluffed up the loops to cover the greenery completely. We added our bows in between each loop, skipping every other one. Then we attached our center star and added flags to either side of it. We decided to take some red and blue mesh and roll it into curls. We were calling these sausage rolls <laughs> and attached it in between the bows. After that, we added our bigger items like the signs and stars across the top and down the sides. We used the chenille stems to wire them on, sometimes in between loops and sometimes we attached the stems through the mesh loop so it sat on top and was visible. My husband had to get in on the action as well. <laughs> Once all of the bigger decorations were attached, we started filling in with the smaller stars and the Christmas ornaments. Then we added some of our spray and attached the curly cues in bunches of three that were wired together. We just kept filling in until we were happy with how it looked. Kay calls this process poking posies. We just keep poking things in until everything looks full and beautiful. And there's our patriotic door garland all completed. I am in love with this swag. Add in the other elements we've made so far and our Southern Living on a Budget vision is really starting to come to life. We hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. And if you did, join us the rest of the week. Tomorrow we'll have Tutorial Tuesday, then we'll have Wednesday, and on Thursday Trish will be back with another Trash to Treasure. And guys, of course, on Saturday we always have Craft Chat. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye!